Okay, so hello Gujarati. This is your lesson 9, part B. This is our third online education video. And basically, we're just going to continue our elements in art, okay? Um, this is an essential learning for you or, or an essential knowledge for you to maintain yung pagiging kulturati mo, okay? So, hindi pwedeng titenga-tenga tayo nang wala tayong inaalam, sure? So, yun nga. Um, this is essential for kulturati like you para makapagbasa ka ng mga paintings in the museums, not just by taking a picture of them, but also learning what's inside the painting, okay? So, now let's talk about our previous lesson muna. So, let's have a um, review of lesson 9, part A, elements of art. So, number one, we have line. Pag sebeting line, it is a point moving in space. Basically, sa Tagalog, pag sebeting line, it means kuhit, okay? So, a point moving in space. Ikaw nga? Okay, very good. If inulit mo, very good. Kapag hindi mo inulit, hindi ka i-crash back ng crash mo. Char. Next. Lines as communication. Um, symbols are made up of lines. Okay? And symbols is a form of visual communication. Therefore, lines are considered as a form of communication. Okay, so, any symbols that are around you, any symbols that you found in the streets that you can find in your house or even in malls, everywhere, kahit na anong mga symbols yan, it is made up of line. And the lines, okay, is considered as a communication because of that. Kasi nga, ano sabi, symbols are made up of line, okay? So, therefore, lines are considered as a form of communication. Gets? Okay, next. So, there are different types of line. Number one, we have horizontal lines. So, when we are talking about horizontal lines in art, it means resting, calm, relax, or dead. So, take for example, kung nakahiga ka ngayon, kung pinapanood mo to, you are horizontal. So, you are horizontal line. You are resting, calm, relax, or hindi ka naman siguro tagibels, no? Kasi nanood ka eh. So, resting, calm, and relax, okay? Next, vertical lines, height, elevation, and stability and firmness. So, if you are standing right now, you are basically depicted as vertical. Okay, so... There is an elevation from your eyes to your ground or to your feet, okay? So, there is an elevation kapag ikaw ay vertical Now, when we are talking about um, stability and firmness, it means that if an if a subject shows or if a subject depicts vertical or stability and firmness, it means that uh, it implies, okay, strength or parang unmovable yung isang bagay, okay? So, take for example, poste. Di ba? Poste ng kuryente. Diba? It, it it depicts stability and firmness, okay? Next, crooked or jag line. So, when you say crooked or jag line, conveys movement and instability, contrast to vertical. Si crook and or, or jag lines naman ay instability ang dinidepict. Violence, conflict, or struggles. Now, kung alam niyo yung Snow White, okay? If you are familiar with Snow White, yung part kung saan napunta siya dun sa evil forest. So, sige, paki-research na lang din. Yung yung mga trees, 'di ba, naging scary sila. So, makikita niyo na yung lines na itsura nung yung lines na bumubuo doon sa trees were um, crooked or hindi pantay-pantay, making it a little scary and of course, it depicts movement, violence, conflict, or struggles, 'di ba? So, kagaya ng example natin last meeting, yung Monster House, 'di ba? Next, we have curving or bending. It depicts or it shows elegance, flexibility, and even sensuality. So, like ballerinas, okay, in performance art, diba, they are depicted as if they are so elegant. So, in other form, kung sa nature naman, pag-uusapan natin yung elegance and flexibility, we're talking about yung swan. Okay, so, diba, yung mga swan, diba? So, kapag nidepict natin yung swan, usually bended yung kanilang mga necks. Okay, so, paano ba yun? It's like, like that, diba? So, it depicts, um, tempa. Okay, it depicts, um, uh, flexibility or elegance. So, lagay like, natin yung partners is one, diba? So, like that. Okay, so, <laughs> just can, pero yun nga, if you're familiar with the swans, like this, so, yung gawin natin minimalism. So, swan yan. Diba? So, if you're familiar with this, it shows elegance and uh, flexibility. That is an example of curving or bending lines. So, balikan natin. Diba ito? This part, this is bending. This is curving. So, ayun. Next, let's have flat lines. So, when we're talking about flat lines, it's your classmate na makapal or madin magsulat. So, let me try to create a flat line. This is a flat line. 
this is my normal line okay so kapag ginawa ka natin dito makikita nyo makapal sya so this is flat line pwede namang maging flat line to ayan tas in the shade ko it is a line so let's say let's try to create um ayan so diba makapal yung lines yep so ayan preso char preso sa bahay char so ayan nga flat lines kapag makapal yung guhit we call it accent line ay sorry flat flat lines makapal na diin sa guhit okay next we have accent lines guhit na lumalabo the more na mag curve so take for example let me just show you an example uh, well take for example when you are trying to create um, hair hair strand so this is a uh, accent line okay or like yung check diba yung check na feed siya somewhere here so pag sabi natin accent line guhit na lumalabo the more na mag curve okay so kapag ginanto mo okay yung end part niya ay lumalabo nagigets so um accent line is often used when you are trying to create eyebrows especially kapag nagbi make up ka diba dun sa roots medyo makapal yung um uh, line, pero pagdating dun sa tip, sa tail lumalabo, so that is accent line next we have gesture line, so when you are talking about gesture lines, it is um, action lines or quick drawn lines that shows movement so take for example, uh, let, let me try to draw so ito, ito siya okay okay so, nagatwork siya ayan, tas ganyan, madika Sorry, mali. Ito. So, this is a gesture line. So, para mas madali sa'yo, punta ka sa emoji mo. Hanapin mo yung heart. Yung heart na tumitibok. Now, we call this gesture lines because it depicts movement. Yung heartbeat, ito, di ba, nagbibeat siya. Yung heartbeat, that is an example of um, gesture gesture lines okay, so what else can you give an example what are the things that you can consider as gesture lines okay so uh, kunwari um, ano ba ba ah well ito so this is also considered as gesture lines kasi it depicts um it depicts action or it depicts emotion so that's that is also gesture line kasi nakikita yung ugat tumitibok di ba galit ganun so that is gesture lines nagigets mo okay next we have um, a video link here so this is um, another like additional information for you sa art theories of lines okay next we have our lesson for today lesson 9 episode 2 elements of art so continuation of previous lesson natin so wait, let's talk about shape. Pag sabi natin shape, listen. An element of art that is two-dimensional, flat, or limited to height and width. Okay, so pag sabi natin shape, actually, shape has, um, shape has two types. Okay. Number one, we have, um, shape. Okay. So, so pag sabi natin shape, okay, it means two-dimensional dimensional and flat okay so let's give you an, let's give an example of shape or shapes okay so medyo madilim okay so what naman okay kita mo na so shape if you think of square you are correct okay so let's see this is a square and it has equal side okay this is a square if you think of a circle, then that is also correct. If you think of a triangle, then also that is correct. Okay, so we have square, circle, and triangle. So these are shapes. Bakit? They are 2D, they are flat. Can you see its depth, its width? Kung gano'ng kakapal yung mga yan? Of course not. Because that is also, because that is only considered as shape 2D. Okay? Number two, we have form okay so when we say 
form an element of art that is three dimensional three dimensional and enclosed encloses volume includes height width and depth as in a cube or a sphere and a pyramid or a cylinder form may also be free flowing so take for example let me just show you again so number two we have form brightness brightness okay so number two we have form so these are the types of shape okay so form when we say form we are talking about 3d okay it has a space and and uh, depth now this is shape okay so actually they are basic pero kapag si shape translate natin to form form a uh, square will be cube okay shape it's not a square anymore but it's now called cube okay if we're going to translate circle, it will be sphere. Okay. So it will be sphere. Okay, so let's have a shadow here. So here's the shadow. So this is not now called circle, but this is called now a uh, sphere. Yes, we have triangle. So triangle is now called pyramid. So, um, pag siya bating form 2D, it has a space and depth. Nagigets mo. So pag siya bating shapes, it is 2D and flat. Wala siyang space and depth. Yes. Oh, nagigets mo. Okay, very good. Next, um, we are talking about um geometric or types of or different types of shapes okay so number one we have let's wait now let's proceed with geometric so when we say geometric okay so shapes and form so when you are talking about shapes and form meron din silang under together number one they have geometric and when we say geometric, it means geo means earth or land, diba? When we say metric, it's basically measurement. Okay. San mo narinig yung geometric na term? Is this a subject in math or is this in science or pwedeng both? Okay, very good. So, pag sabi natin geometric, ibig sabihin niya shapes find origin in mathematical proposition as much as as much its translation and use are often man-made. This includes shapes such as squares, triangle, cubes, circles, spherism, and cones among others. So, kahit na si shapes and form, they have different meaning. Okay? Together, they have um, geometric okay, under them. So, example on geometric is this. Piet Mondrian composition with a color and a gray lines one okay so the version one yeah because may other form pa of 1918 so but just looking at it makikita nyo that there is geometrical shape usually pag sinabi, natin, pag sinabi natin geometrical or geometric shapes it can be measured okay ibig sabihin usually symmetrical siya kasi nag pantay to pantay to pantay to pantay to all sides are almost all um equal Okay, so pag sinabi naman natin organic, so under pa rin ni shapes and form, we have organic. Organic, saan nyo ba narinig yung organic? Organic medicine, organic something. So pag sinabi natin organic, we're talking about nature. Basically, pag sinabi natin organic, organic shapes are those readily occurred or readily occurring in nature, often irregular and asymmetrical. So the shapes like, um, you have leaves have flowers or sometimes even roses okay so we call this irregular shape so I have here some examples um, the organic shape are like this 
for this. This is, a, this is an example. Louis Comfort Tiffany's Morning Glory. So, paano mam naging organic yun? Basically, ito, hindi mo siya makikita sa mat. Walang ganitong shape, tama? Mam, meron? No, wala. Kasi, this, ins this is inspired from a flower bulb. Okay, so, yung roses na nakataob, like a bell flower. So, mam, symmetrical yan? No, it's not. So, well, yes, symmetrical ito pinahaganyan, pero what if nakagan ito? Is it still symmetrical? It's not. Organic shapes are often irregular or and asymmetrical. Okay, so, ito pa. Vincent Van Gogh, Starry Night. Mam, paano naging asymmetrical yan? Symmetrical siya kapag ginan ito ko. No, it's not. By looking at the shapes, it's organic. The inspiration is actually like water flowing. What, uh, water, uh, water in the river flowing. Or like smoke. Okay? So, smoke is uh, considered as uh, is considered as organic. Okay? So, this is considered as organic shape. Nagigets? Okay. So, there is, or we have here, there are video links here. And I want you to watch this later or pwedeng ngayon din. Okay, so you may click on that and watch the video. Next, we have space. So when we're talking about space, ito yung hinihingi ng ex-boyfriend mo. Sure! So when we say space in art, it means related to shape and form is space. It is usually interfered from sense of depth. Whether it is real or simulated, real space is three-dimensional. Now when we are talking about space, it's actually giving the audiences the view or the perspective kung paano titignan yung objects okay so space affects the wideness or the vastness of the artwork okay so for example we have two types pag sabi natin space types we have number one negative negative okay or negative space an empty space in an art can be illusion or hollowness or hollow okay, so tagal natin yung ness or hollow okay tapos kapag sabi natin positive unoccupied space in art now Kapag sinabi natin negative space, so let me just show you. Negative space is this, this part. Okay? Bakit? Kasi wala namang nakalagay dyan eh. Okay, so it affects the audience perspective kung paan siya tignan. So this, we, we call this um, positive space kasi it occupies or, or nag-occupy siya ng something. It can be illusion, uh, illusion or it can be real. So ito illusion. This is a positive space illusion. This is a positive space reality okay so this is a negative space as um reality pero yung reflection sa loob that is neg negative space illusion gets mo bakit tinawag na negative space kasi wala naman nakalagay dito eh eto may nakalagay dito okay so this is an irregular or this is an organic shape also gets mo so, Chicago, Illinois, Anish Kapoor, Cloud Gate. So, this is the, an example. Next, we have this one. This is Andrew Wyatt's um, painting. Okay. So, it also uses uh, space. So, space affects the perspective of the audience. So, we call this the positive space. This is a positive space. This is a positive space. This is also a positive space. Okay. Kasi may mga nakalagay. Okay. Pero, these things here, this is space here, this is space right here, and right here, since walang nakalagay dyan, this is a negative, th those are considered as negative space. Nagigets? If walang nakalagay, that is negative. If may nakalagay, that is positive. Do you understand? Okay, very good. Next, we have color theory. Let's talk about colors. Actually, this is my favorite in art theory, the colors, kasi it makes me understand people's emotion way more better. Siguro, sa akin lang, pero most people like color din when it comes to art, okay? Let's talk about color theory. Color, color allows viewer to make responses based on memory, emotion, and instinct, among others. This element is a property of light. As it is reflected of the object, it creates characteristics. So, with colors, actually, it portrays characteristics. Kung ano yung nakikita ang color ng audience based on their experience, it is what they understand doon sa painting or parang ganun nila na interpret okay so for example this pen is color let me just brighten it up this is called this pen is color red can you see it's red so if this pen is color red then what do you think it means okay so what is red at, fr at the first place ano muna ba yung color red ano ba yung sabihin niya so let me just uh, have or let me just share this to you note 
color is not intrinsic to an object and without light, one cannot perceive color kasi color is a property of light kaya nga kapag kapag tinago natin yung uy, tsaka sya, eh, red, ba diba? so red, na kapag diniliman ko to without light, okay, so let me just you cannot really see kung anong kulay nya okay, do you understand? so kapag naman maliwanag, you can see it kasi, di kasi um, tung color, it is a property of light so, here is the color wheel. We have here the color wheel. I think alam nyo to. Kasi nga, nung bata kayo, nung grade 4 kayo, and grade 5, ginagawa nyo yan. So, we have cool colors here. So, cool colors is from red, violet to yellow, uh, to green. So, this is cold colors. And then, we have warm colors. This is red to uh, yellow, green. Okay? So, kung papansin nyo yung mga indie films, especially kapag night, kapag gabi, di ba, bluish colors yung ginagamit nila. Because they want to depict that it is a cool color. Pero kapag kunwari tang haling tapat, they are using like orangey color. Kasi nga they want to show it that it is warm or maini talaga, maalinsangan, ganun. So this is the um, color theory. This is actually, or this color picture is actually used for graphic designing. So nakikita nyo, mayroon din codes dito yung um, colors, ba? So dito naman makita nyo yung CMYK. So CMYK is often use or it's actually used for printing naman and when we are talking about RGB this is our uh, primary colors RGB okay so in in our primary colors there is no such thing as I uh, sorry um, RGB is used for um, digital okay pero pag sila betting red yellow and blue that is our primary color okay so meron tayong meanings dito ng color. So, pag sabi red, it means intense, fire, blood, energy, danger, love, passionate, strong. And we have there, um, red, violet. Violet shows uh, royalty, power, nobility, wealth, ambition, dignified, mysterious, and mysterious. Then we have blue, sky, sea, depth, stability, trust, masculine, tranquil. Number, what's next? What's that? Uh, that is color green. So, color green, it depicts um, nature, growth, fertility, freshness, healing, safety, money. And then we have yellow, sunshine, joy, cheerfulness, intellect, energy, and attention. And then we have orange, um, warm, stimulating, enthusiasm, happiness, success, creativity, and autumn. Okay? So, ito yung meaning of colors. Well, you can actually just um, zoom it kapag nakuha yung PowerPoint kasi madali, medyo malit yung sulat niya. Digitally, merong yellow. Ay, merong green pala, sorry. Merong green. Okay. Pero, in reality, it's actually just yellow and... Yellow, red, and blue. Okay. So, ito naman. Uh, these are the combinations of colors that you could use in fashion designing. Okay. In color combination when it comes to your clothes. Um, pag sinabi natin, analogous colors, these colors are placed side by side. So, take for example, ito. Red, red, orange, and orange they are called analogous kasi magkakatabi sila okay and then we have complementary colors complementary colors opposite to each other on the color wheel so take for example we have my favorite here is yellow and blue um ana uh, complementary colors kaya yung complementary kasi it complements each other i mean pag pinagtabi mo sila they look really good together like blue and yellow actually di, sobrang ganda niya pag magkasama like red or red and green so we have here red and green Okay, red and green, we use it for Christmas. So, diba? So, it's complementary color. So, look at this. Actually, we have an, here an example of complementary color. So, r uh, blue, o blue, green, and red, orange, they are opposite. They are placed oppositely in the color wheel. But still, they complement each other. It means that it makes them look together kapag pinag-combine mo sila. Actually, magagamit ito when you are trying to think of what to wear sa isang araw. And then, you say, Triadic color, we're talking about three colors is spaced equally apart on the color wheel. So, for example, we have red. So, this is red, yellow, and we have blue. So, merong triadic dito. Nagigets triadic. So, they are placed, ito din, triadic din to. So, if you try to create um, triangles in this color wheel and you will be able to find the matches of it, just make sure na pantay yung sides niya, okay? Ito. So, we have grayscale, we have also um, split complementary so here is split complementary and a color and the colors next to its complement color wheel okay so 
uh, kung ang complementary color ay ito so magkatapat hindi, so ano yung katapat niya so kung ito yung katapat niya ito naman yung pinag-uusapan natin ito, tapos yung katabi niya, parang crisscross naman pag sinabi natin split complementary then you have gray scale, pag sinabi natin gray scale intensity of black, and then pag sinabi natin monochromatic, colors of single hue so ito, monochromatic yan kasi, di ba, um ito, blue. This is the area or the domain of blue. Okay? Ang tawag natin dyan, monochromatic. Monochromatic. Okay? Ayan. Yung monochromatic, hindi siya dahil monochrome, gray lang. Kasi, ang akala ng iba, pag sabi natin monochrome, um, black lang. Pero when we see, ano yun, kasalanan ng, ng, ng selfish yan. Pero pag sabi talaga natin monochromatic, isang kulay na pinagbago-bago yung value or yung lightness. Nagigets? Okay. Next, we have, ayun, hue, it, it's the name of the color. So, we have primary colors. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Primary colors, Roy B. Okay, Roy B. Red, yellow, and blue. Pero sa digital, like sa computer, sa television, we have Roy G. B. Ito yung alam nyo. Pero in reality, wala talagang green. Ang green na-develop lang siya nung na-discover yung digital. Next, we have secondary colors. Secondary colors are the colors na kapag pinaghalo mo yung primary colors, may makikreate na colors. So, take for example, um, red and yellow, so makakakreate ka ng orange, blue and red, makakapag-create ka ng um, ay, red and blue, sorry, red and blue, makakapag-create ka ng violet, yellow and blue, makakapag-create ka ng green. So, they are called secondary colors. At pag-sabi natin, there's your colors, yung pag pinaghalo mo naman itong secondary, makakapag-create ka ng kulay, or makakapag-create kapag pinaghalo mo itong crisscross, they are called the tertiary, pangatlo na sila. Okay, so take for example, sky blue, or like red orange uh, yellow green ayun so sila na yung ter tertiary colors yung pangatlo naman nagigets okay next we have value pag sabi natin value yung va uh, value it means use lightness and darkness a color values changes when white or black is added so ayun nga yung monochromatic di ba yung monochromatic let us check monochromatic si monochromatic makikita niyo nagbabago yung value niya Okay, kasi dinagdagan ng lightness. Ito dinagdagan ng darkness. So, that is value. Next, we have, um, saan na tayo? Intensity, quality of brightness and purity. High intensity, the color is strong and bright. Low intensity, the color is faint or dull. So, let me show you. This is high intensity. Okay. This is high intensity. And this is low intensity. Do you understand? Okay. Next. Let's proceed to normal intensity. So, example, what do you think is the emotion of this color? Or what do you think is the emotion of this painting? So, merong orange dito. Ano sabi sa orange? Kapag orange, that is probably warm or, let's say, uh, hapon, autumn. Diba? Tapos ito, makikita nyo na bluish, bluish siya. Okay? So, meaning to say, this is a cold stone. Malamig eh. Kasi blue, so this is a, a house of parliaments of 1900s. House of parliaments, therefore, it is made up of stone. And the stone, di ba kapag ganto mo yung, hawak mo yung pader, malamig. So, that is a cold stone, okay? Next, you have Giovanni Bautista Sima de Cornigliano. So, makikita nyo, there is a complement, there are complementary colors. This is yellow and blue. This is green and red. So, makikita nyo, nagmamit siya ng complementary colors, okay? So, what else? Ito, so this is analogous color. Kasi it used a brown, green, yellow, orange. Eh, di ba tabi-tabi yun sa color wheel? So, Edgar Degas, um, before the race of 1882 to 1931, analogous siya. Kasi tabi-tabi yung kulay na ginamit, di ba? Next, we have a scream of Edward uh, Monk. So, what do you think? Ano siya? So, merong orange, merong yellow, merong blue, merong black. So, gumamit siya ng iba't ibang elements ng color dito. And what do you think? Anong dinedepict nito? Anong type of color ang dinedepict niya? Okay? So, there is a video link here. I want you to watch this. Pwede ngayon, pwede rin mamaya. Next, we have texture. So, pagsabating texture, an element of art that refers to the way things feel or look as if they might feel if touch. So, take for example, um, my laptop screen. There is no texture in here. So, pag hinawakan mo daw to, smooth. Diba? Now, let's talk about um, texture. Pagsabi ng texture, texture in two-dimensional plane, texture can be implies using one technique or a combination of other elements of art. So, take for example, impasto. So, let me just um, 
uh, oh well, so, two-dimensional plane. So, di ba, impasto. Yung impasto, apply ka lang ng apply. Okay, so, lagay ka lang ng lagay. It is still flat. Okay, pag tignan mo siya, uh, just for, just to add texture lang. Okay, so, flat pa rin siya. Wala siyang, hindi siya nagpapakita ng depth or ng space. Oh, so, that is called texture in two-dimensional plane. Okay? Next, we have surface texture. So, ito naman letter B. It refers to the texture of the three-dimensional object in art. Perception and depth or depth or pwede rin naman optical illusion. So, sige. Let me just give you an example. Um, pag sinabi natin texture in two-dimensional, so, under tayo ng texture ha. So, just... texture. So, texture number one, texture in surface, uh, in two-dimensional, in 2D. Okay, so let us pretend that this is a square and spiky siya. Tapos medyo may bilog-bilog. So, what do you think kapag hinawakan mo ito, anong feeling? Or, let's say, sige, uh, let's say, Um, ayan so this is texture into the form okay pero pag sinabi natin surface texture or texture that refers to 3 dimensional object art it's actually the parang form din kanina yung kanina so let's add apply levels of values Now, this is 3D. Okay, so pag hinawaka mo siya, you know that it's spear. Oh, so that is letter B. The B surface texture. Okay? So, ano difference nila? Kapag sabi ating surface texture, merong depths. Kapag sabi ating texture in 2D, walang depth. Pero alam mo na nalubak-lubak. Alam mo na butas-butas. Alam mo na matalas. Gets? Next example. So example ng um, texture in surface is this. Franz Fabor the Younger, Margarita Gonzaga. So let me just zoom it to you. And so this is a texture in um, surface texture. Okay. So by just looking at it, it's actually uh, it actually the beads actually shows dimensions. Okay. So ganun lang. Ayan lang, look at her skin. Actually, yung skin niya, ayan naman yung example ng texture in 2D. Okay, yung skin lang ha, yung skin. Not the shape, the entire face. Yung skin lang yan. So, smooth yung skin niya. Okay? So, yung hair niya, ayan. Pero pag sabi ng surface, ito naman, yung merong illusion of depth and space. Nagigets mo. Pero pag ginawa mo, parang, ay, malubak, ganun. Yan lang. So, next, we have a video link here para mas ma-explain pa sa inyo kung ano yung texture. And we have output number 2 for online education. Ang deadline natin ay March 27. Or if merong nakalagay dyan sa calendar kung kailan yung deadline ng second output natin, sundin natin yung sa calendar. And the requirement is, of course, habang ginagawa nyo yung output number 2, kailangan meron kayong time lapse or photo documentation na nakaklip doon sa ginawa nyo. Kasi mahirap na baka sa ibang pinagawa yan. Okay? So, magtiwala ka sa sarili mo na ikaw ang gagawa. Okay? So, Paano mam namin ipapasa yon? Well, digitally, ipapasa yun siya. Pwedeng picture yung artwork niyo or pwede rin naman kayong mag-digital art. Okay? So, uh, output number two, mag-research ng artworks na ginawa ng isang Filipino na meron ng mga principles from lesson 9A hanggang lesson 9B. Okay? So, ano-ano ba yun? Isa-isahin nga natin. We have, um, from the previous, we have lines. Okay? So, lines, then we have shapes and form, and then number three, we have space, number five, we have color theory, number six, we have um, texture, and ayun, ayun lang. 
So we have six. Or pag you ah, nagento na lang. Let me just write it down. So the elements. Elements in arts. Okay. Number one, we have lines. Number two, we have um, shapes. Number three, we have form. Number four, we have um, color. Number five, we have space. Number six, we have texture. Ano pa? Ano pa yung wala dito? Mm. Oh, okay na. Yep. Okay na. Yun lang. Any questions? Additional informations? Please watch the video para maritain mo yung mga inaral natin. Thank you for watching!